This is KGW News at Noon. I'm telling you, we saw a little bit of everything on the roads this morning. Spin outs, crashes, flipped vehicles. The icy conditions made for a mess this morning. It caught some drivers off guard trying to get back to work after the holiday weekend. Thank you for joining us. I'm Brenda Braxton. You know, Sky 8 spotted crashes all over the area this morning. Those icy conditions delayed school for some students. Rod Hill will fill us in on improving conditions this afternoon. But first, Tim Gordon wraps up the wrecks that jam traffic. The first day back after the Thanksgiving weekend, it looked like a beautiful commute from a distance. But when our Sky 8 crew looked closer, they found a whole bunch of crashes. Starting on Northeast Airport Way, an icy section was shut down after a pickup truck slid off the road. Then across the river to Washington Highway 14, a couple of crashes early, the second one near the I-205 interchange, and you could see the sheen on the freeway reflecting headlights. Over on I-5 in the Salmon Creek area, a couple more wrecks. A truck spun out into the median in a light pole, the other with a few vehicles involved, one car badly damaged. Even the big rigs had trouble. This one off the ramp back in Oregon at Delta Park. And in Washington County, more icy trouble. A pickup crashed in Hillsboro. And another pickup mixed it up with a mail truck near Southwest Murray and Canyon. Both had to be towed. Students in the Hawkinson School District were delayed. They put out some de-icer at Hawkinson Middle School. Most drivers took it easy on the frosty pavement nearby. And in the Battleground School District, North County Schools had a two-hour delay. Battleground High School ran two hours late. Ninth grader Jonathan Feekin wished it didn't. It gets me a little nervous because sometimes it can get canceled depending on how bad the ice is and we had to make it up at the end of the school year. And in the gorge, they are still thawing out. The Hood River County School District had a delayed start today, too. In downtown Portland, Tim Gordon, KGW News. Now let's check in with meteorologist Rod Hill. So, Rod, we are starting to warm up. Yes, we are. In fact, it feels great outside, kind of. Here's a look at the mountain passes. To me, the biggest story is, you know, the Cascade Passes for days and days have been, although well plowed and treated, they've been snow covered and icy, but it's now 41 degrees at government camps. So highway 26 is becoming slushy. All the ice and snow quickly getting off of that highway. Same thing at Santiam. In fact, it's 38 degrees over Santiam Pass. So it's been a very snow packed roadway that is thawing big time this afternoon. The coast range had some icy spots. Never really got that bad over the weekend. But here's a sunset rest area. Snow still up there alongside the road, but the roadway itself is 41 degrees. So. Uh, I think that's a big part of our story today. We are melting away the tough travel spots. Here's our live camera from the Oregon Veterans Home out in the Dow, still showing some snow on the ground there. And with the cloud cover, it's only 34 degrees. Now it is sunny in the West Gorge and it's warmer because of that. And at the coast, look at this, Depot Bay will be up to 53 degrees this afternoon. Here's the camera at the Channel House looking up to the north. So that's gonna be terrific. And Portland with clear skies is already up to 44. We're on our way up to about 48 degrees in the next couple of hours. Uh, pretty quiet weather week coming. We do have some rain, but snow levels will be relatively high, and we'll have more on that coming up. Quiet's a good thing. Thank <laughs> you, Rod. Well, wintry weather is hammering many other parts of the country. Kathy Park shows us the mess from the Midwest to the Northeast. This morning, millions waking up to nasty winter weather. The first major snowstorm of the season slamming the Northeast, delaying and stranding millions of people during the busiest travel holiday of the year. Sunday, a Delta Airlines jet slid off the runway in Buffalo. The weather and the icing is, a, is a, an issue for the airfield. Heavy snowfall, freezing rain and high winds, keeping thousands of planes out of the air and creating slick surfaces and reducing visibility on the roads. You don't want to be driving around in this mess. In western Massachusetts, drivers struggling to gain traction on snow-covered roads. The middle of the country getting bombed with blizzard conditions. In Michigan, freezing rain and heavy snow causing vehicles to spin out and slide off the roads. In some areas, heavy wet snow has cut off power to tens of thousands. Now, as a storm arrives in the northeast, treacherous conditions are coming with it. More snow is headed this way later on this afternoon, which could mean a very messy evening commute. In Albany, New York, Kathy Park, now back to you.
An update on a deadly crash in Marion County. Sheriff's deputies say three workers from Guatemala died and three others are in the hospital. A driver was transporting 12 Christmas tree farm workers when they were T-boned at the intersection of Sunny, Sunny View Road and Cordon Road Saturday night. The 18-year-old driver in the pickup truck wasn't seriously hurt. At this point, no one is facing charges. London Bridge reopened to cars and pedestrians today after a terror attack killed two people. The suspect stabbed multiple people before police shot and killed him. Friday's rampage started near nearby rather at Fishmonger's Hall. The CEO of the company says one of his employees named Lucas pulled a five foot whale tusk off the wall and charged the terrorists, allowing other people to escape. There's a vicious knife fight in which Lucas takes five cuts all the way up his arm. He's hurt badly. He doesn't flinch for a moment. The minute passes. He's joined by two or three others. And now overwhelmed by numbers, the assailant goes down the stairs takes on the same sort of fight and reception and Lucas follows. Wow, he is a hero. The killer had been released from prison after serving six years for terrorism. Now Britain is rethinking the cases of about 74 other terrorists who were released early. Tonight, the Kaiser City Council will discuss the best way to deal with the upcoming traffic mess when In-N-Out Burger opens. The new location at Kaiser Station opens this month. According to the Statesman Journal, if cars fill up the restaurant parking lot, the overflow could use the parking lot at Volcano Stadium. Ideally, flaggers would guide drivers from the stadium to the drive through lane. in and out still needs to strike a deal with the Volcanoes and a nearby Target store. Lawyers in Seattle plan to announce a class action lawsuit against Seattle Children's Hospital today. The hospital has been dealing with a mold outbreak in its operating rooms. Last month, the hospital CEO reported the number of people who got sick from mold was higher than previously thought. Since 2001, six patients have died and 14 more were infected. The hospital is adding new HEPA filters to all of its operating rooms. A very emotional vigil for a Vancouver woman killed in a case of domestic violence. Dozens of people came out to remember 35-year-old Tiffany Ojeda Hill. Clark County deputies say she had a restraining order against her husband. Keeland Hill recently bailed out of jail. He shot and killed Tiffany in the parking lot of Sarah J. Anderson Elementary School last Tuesday. Tiffany's mom and her two kids were also in the car. All of them survived. Tiffany's mother spoke at the vigil, saying she came to visit because she knew something wasn't right. I tried to save my baby. I came home here to break a home with me and the kids. I knew something was wrong and going on. The family has set up a GoFundMe to take care of Tiffany's kids. At last check, it had raised almost $84,000. We have talked a lot about the homeless crisis in our area. Well, today we want to share a success story. A Beaverton family got out of homeless shelters and into an apartment on Thanksgiving Day. Christina Siafi is a mother of four and she's raising two little kids with her boyfriend. She was recently diagnosed as bipolar. Siafi spent months homeless and found it was almost impossible to get out of that cycle. And then that little guy kept asking me, Mom, can we go home now? And, sorry, I don't want to cry. Um, that's the hardest question because then when he's asking me if we can go home and I have to look at him and say we don't have a home now. But Siafi refused to give up. She took a rent well class to make herself more attractive to landlords. The organization Family Promise of Beaverton also helped her family find a place to stay. She now has two jobs, including full benefits, and says her family is doing great. Wonderful to hear. Hey, we have some breaking news now in Pac-12 action in a stunning move. Chris Peterson has announced he is resigning as head coach, football coach at Washington. Peterson says he needs to recharge and will take on an advisory role in the athletic department. 
Peterson had some incredible success at Washington, winning Pac-12 titles. Defensive coordinator Jimmy Lake will take over as head coach. Well, after a Civil War win, the Ducks are now getting ready for the Pac-12 championships. Oregon knows it's going to have to play better to beat Utah. The Ducks offense wasn't impressive against the Beavers. Even with 10 wins this season, the Ducks are out of the playoff hunt, but there's still plenty to play for. Oregon can guarantee a trip to the Rose Bowl with a win. There's still a chance they could make it to the Rose Bowl with a loss, but Coach Cristobal says the team's mentality is get a W. Kickoff from Levi Stadium in Santa Clara is this Friday at 5 o'clock.